Um, and I just want to kind of probably um, allude to the point you said in the in your previous statement in relation to frameworks. And obviously, frameworks um, in different jurisdictions have different models of assisted dying. Some a little bit more liberal than others. Mm. Um, I mean, the template that I would look at, at is in New Zealand, where they kind of uh, brought in assisted dying by popular referendum. So um, that's my last question on this. But, um, and the criteria and the definition of those that can avail of assisted dying. I mean, in, in most countries uh, where assisted dying has been regulated, um, it's mostly the definition of somebody that can um, avail of it is somebody that has less than six months to live. Mm -hmm. And that's the, defined by a number of doctors. Uh, now, in them circumstances, uh, the majority of people may avail of assisted dying if they meet the criteria. There are those that don't avail of assisted dying because it gives people comfort that if their end of life comes very, very complicated, um, you know, they, they have their option. And I think that's, a, again, that's a, a fundamental point. So what I'm trying to say is there is, jurisdictions have different, different interpretations. Mm -hmm. In the Irish context, I think a template of New Zealand, I think, would work. Um, and it's up to legislators to do that. And obviously, we can hear the voice of legislators. We can hear the voice of you know, those that are in the legal profession and the medical profession. But the most funda uh, fundamental voice in all this debate is those that may be in the circumstances that could and may want to avail of assisted dying. To me, that's the, the most important voice in all this debate. Some may, in that situation may not want to, actually the majority of people will never want to avail of assisted dying, but there are those that will want to do that. And again, that's, I think that's a, a fundamental right. So that's just my observations um, in an Irish context. Uh, just my second question um, is in relation to a hypothetical situation. If, as legislators, uh, we can't decide, you know, as, you know, to um, legislate for assisted dying, is there any parameters in an Irish constitutional context that there could be an indicative referendum um, to say, as in New Zealand, they had a referendum, they put it to the people and say, look, at, would you, uh, do you favour assisted dying, yes or no? In, in the New Zealand context, 67% said yes. Then, as legislators, then we legislate. Is there any sort of par par parameters that actually, that actually could happen in a Irish context? I'm going to go to Dr Casey on that first. Uh, thank you very much. Well, the, 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 there are um, there are provisions in the constitution to permit uh, referendums other than a proposal to amend the constitution. So um, that could be uh, a mechanism for a referendum or, or what have you. <laughs> you have me googling. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> there is a provision, Connor, isn't there? Uh, uh, but I can't speak to it. Uh, I think right. it involves a resolution of the Dawn and of the challenge. And a certain threshold to be met in each case. Yes. Oh, it has, it's never been used. Not to my knowledge. It's never been used. In times when I wished it could be used. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could be. I bet yeah. I disagree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 20 seconds. Are you opening your mind? <laughs> yeah, we're so glad. Yeah. <laughs> but there, there's obviously, there is scope to do that. But highly, highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. Well, would there be the political to, will ultimately? I know, to, I know. To, that's, yeah. that's the question, the yeah. political will. Are you okay? I think so. Dr Mulligan, is there any kind of, I mean, just kind of the previous comments I made about kind of jurisdictions and... Yeah, you know. I mean, I, look, I think it's really, I would suggest that it would be really useful for you to look at different jurisdictions. Um, I think you just, I think the methodology of how to do that is complicated because I think if you ask someone presumably who's sort of like administering all of this in a particular regime, like jurisdiction, they might come in and say, this is the law, it's great, there's no problems. But like, I know there is a lot of scholarship about abuses and problems in different jurisdictions. So I suppose just you need to look at sort of how people do it in different places, but in a critical way. You know, you want to be finding out if it's is not the, working. But is there evidence way. of that happening? You want to look at that. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, as an, I, I'm not here today with all that evidence, but mm. like, I am aware of scholarship debating those issues in jurisdictions where it is legal. So, mm -hmm. you know, the Netherlands, Belgium, so certain states in the US. Um, 
I think it's very important to look at them, but also to look at them in a rigorous way. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay.